Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is the 1st of July which means it is time for a new sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see what the sketch looks like this month, see my first set that I made, and find out how you can download the printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're going to want to download the sheet load of cards, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and while you're there go ahead and tap that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. At the beginning of every month, I share a new free printable for my subscribers called Sheet Load of Cards. What this is, is once I find a sketch, I usually like to stick with it. So I find the best way to cut the pattern paper and the cardstock to get you as many of those cards as possible. A sheet load of cards to be exact. That is usually anywhere between 6 and 12 cards from each printable. You usually use 2 or 3 pieces of pattern paper and then some cardstock. July 2021 is a special edition in a couple of ways. First of all, it is a fun fold card and we don't do those too often around here. And it is also a mini slimline. Are you ready to see what it looks like? Here's a look at this month's edition. Like I just mentioned, it is a mini slimline and there is a fun fold, which from the sketch you might not be able to see, but when I show you that first set, you'll definitely see what I mean. Now this layout might look familiar to you. A few months ago, I used some sheet load leftovers to create this card in front of you. And I fell in love with the layout and I asked you if I should make it a sheet load and it was a resounding yes. So that's what July 2021 is all about. You will end up with 12 mini slimline cards if you follow the supply list and all of the cutting guides. And the fun fold part comes in because you'll notice that only part of that front opens up. I think they might call this a book binding fold, but I just like how you have that extra little bit of decoration and then just something a little bit different for the opening. If you want to see the video where I made this from scraps, I will have it linked in that description box below so you can check it out. Now, before we get much further, I do want to let you know that while this isn't really a hard card to put together, there are lots of little instructions that you need to kind of pay attention to before you get started. So I will be back tomorrow with a full process video, so you might want to wait until then to get started on your set. But if you do want to get a jump start, make sure to pay attention to all of the little extra instructions. I tried to put most of those in italics, but there are a few for these cards. Speaking of tomorrow, not only will I be back with the process video here on my YouTube, but my team of collaborators will be joining me with their sets for the month as well. And I don't know if you saw the good news or not, but we have two new collab team members joining us starting in July. Their links, as well as the rest of the collaboration team, are all in my description box below. So I hope you'll check them out, subscribe to them here on YouTube, or follow them on their blogs or their Instagram accounts. Now, if you want to get a little bit more of an introduction to our two new team members, I will also have that video linked down in that description box. Before I share that first set and tell you how to download this month's edition, I did kind of want to go over some of the specifics and that way if you do go ahead and get started, I've told you a little bit about them beforehand. So the finished size of this mini slimline is six and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. 
I find that this size fits very well into standard envelopes that you can buy just about anywhere where you can purchase envelopes. This package came from the Dollar Tree and I did have some before that had the security paper on the inside but luckily my mom found me some at hers that are just white on the inside and there's actually no licking on these so that's a bonus. If you would like to yield 12 cards this month, you will need two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and nine pieces of cardstock. Now those nine solid cardstocks, they will be used for that background piece, which is just a flat piece of cardstock. It doesn't open in any way. And it will be used for your um, book binding fold card, as well as your image or sentiment spot. Now, if you like this layout, but you don't necessarily need 12 of them, I do give you the dimensions for a single card. And here's where some of those special instructions come into play. So make sure to read those very carefully if you're gonna get started. But basically, it's how to score and fold the card that goes on the front that is folded. Now, also for the sentiment, this is actually a three inch circle cut in half and then some of the excess is cut off the right just so it hangs right with that pattern paper. Down at the bottom, like always, I try to give you some alternative ideas for the cards. Now, one of them that I actually showed on the sketch is you could punch a couple holes on that score line and thread some twine or cording or whatever fiber you have through that before you adhere this to your base. That just adds a little texture to your cards. You can add die cuts, you can add ephemera, you could add more layers, so use some foam tape. Make this your own. The second page is the cutting guides, and you'll notice here on your 12 by 12 piece of pattern paper, there is quite a bit of leftover. Now, if you double your cardstock to 18 pieces, you can actually cut this in a way that you can get 12 pieces of each A and B from one piece of pattern paper. Let me know in the description box below if you would like me to come back and show that. I just didn't know, first of all, if anybody would want to end up with 24 cards and using 18 pieces of cardstock it seemed a little excessive for a sheet load of cards, but I can show you how to do that. Down here on the left, this is going to be the cardstock for the backer piece. So if you look at my original sample, it's the piece here in the background that is embossed. You need four sheets of those and cut down for 12 backers. And then over here for CS2, you also need four pieces of cardstock. But this is where we have some special instructions come into play. And I did try to note all of the different items on that cutting guide there as well. So where you fold, where you score, where you add your adhesive, so your card ends up looking like the sketch. And once again, I do have some written over here on the left side of that. Just like I mentioned before, the sentiments are actually three inch circles. So you would cut six of those and then cut them in half before you stamp it. And that way you'll yield the 12 circles or the 12 sentiment pieces that you need. But I'll be back tomorrow again to show you all these special things. And don't be scared. I know it sounds like a lot today, but it's really not. They're really not that hard. You just need to know how to put it together. I will also give you some alternatives for how you can get your circle pieces. And I also have a surprise for my channel members who might have electronic cutters. Let's see what the main supplies were for my first set of cards. And then I'm going to give you a look at those. In front of me here are the main supplies I use for my cards. The two pattern papers I used are from the Park Lane Paper Pad, which is a Joann brand, and it is called Peaceful Pasture. I will try to find that on their website and link it below if I can. There are lots of very pretty patterns in there. For my backer card, I used fresh asparagus cardstock from Gina K Designs. And then for my bookbind card and for my sentiment piece, I just got out some white cardstock. 
in the paper pad that I chose these papers from, they do have copper accents. So I heat emboss with some copper embossing powder, which it's kind of hard to see, but it's this one right here. I thought that added a little something to the sentiment and just brought a little shine to the card. Also on the sketch, I did go ahead and add some floss where it showed the twine on the sketch. I tried to match the stripes in the flowers as best as I could. And to cut my circles, I used the second to largest die cut here from Spellbinders. But again, tomorrow I'll have another option for you and give you some other ideas if you don't have circle dies. And for my sentiments, I just chose some from Signature Greetings 2 from Paper Tray Ink. Now, unfortunately, this set is no longer available, but with sheet load, I like you to use what you have. So I like you to get out the paper in your stash to pull out those old stamps that might not be the newest or that you might not use as much as some of your newer sets because those stamps still work well. Let's go ahead and take a look at that first set of cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see some of these cards close up and now I'm going to tell you how you can download the July 2021 printable for free as long as you're a subscriber to my channel. As always, we go on the honor system here. I don't make you email me proof of membership or sign up for any mailing list. If you are going to click on the link in the description box, make sure that you have already subscribed to my channel and you know I would love it if you would double tap on that bell to get all notifications. To find the file link, you're going to look right above my Instagram team in the description box below and you will find the link to the file. Now it might say something about listen to the video for a password, but you just watching to this point is your password. You will not need one to download the file. Now speaking of downloading, you can download it and print it out or you can always just pull the file up on screen and work with it from there. That is up to you. Also, even though I print mine in color, you can print this on a black and white printer and it will work just the same. Until tomorrow, which will be the process video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.